Howdy MJ friends, looking at Canadian MJ names in this video, we'll look at USMJ names tomorrow. Before I get into it, if you are not in the Facebook group, MST Marijuana Stock Traders, you need to be in it. It's one of the best free sources for information that there is in the MJ space. And I made this post today as the moderators do a great job keeping that place productive and they do it for free. They're not getting paid anything. So I think it'd be a great idea for us to all chip in. So if you are using that forum and it has helped you profit, I suggest potentially checking out the post I made and seeing their PayPal account for a little bit of a thank you. So starting it off, we're going to look at the major names and then we'll look at the big tier two, three, and then we'll look at TGOD, VFF, and CXX and NRTH. So today was a day where it's a gap down open and gap down opens are for buying. I can hear hundreds of voices in unison say it with me. Gap down opens are for buying, especially when coming after multiple red days in a row and in hourly oversold conditions. So we had the strong names from yesterday that we were looking at in terms of dip buying. OGI was on the list. We had IIPR on the list. APHA was on the list. VFF was on the list as one of the stronger names. So pretty much anyone that you bought at the open, you made money. Obviously, some names are better than others. I chose APHA and IIPR for my bounces today. And I could see very clearly on that APHA was not the right choice. And that was just luck of the draw to a certain degree. ACB ended up being the best dip buying in the morning. VFF ended up being the best dip buying with a new all-time high with some news boost to help things out. And we saw Crom with a, bit, a good dip buy. We saw CGC as a laggard with some good dip buying. So... Lots of bounces everywhere. I want to go over just psychologically the first couple minutes of trading and why little differences matter. So if I am looking for an oversold bounce and I buy in the first five-minute candlestick, which I did for APHA, I got in at 920. We see the bounce follow through. Everything's looking good. Bulls are going to the upside. We get a little pullback on the five-minute time frame. So it was a bit of an odd morning overall watching the S&P 500 trading. And that caused for a slow start. For these bounces, normally we're used to quick bounces and convincing action saying, yes, the bottom is in. This bounce is going to get follow through. And we didn't really get that today until almost 45 minutes or an hour past of trading. But the point is here on this five minute consolidation, if you entered on the five minute candlestick, this pullback brings it down towards your entry level. And there's the potential that your trade goes red. Now, if you're looking at a name that had a better bounce like Cron or ACB, it's a completely different psychological stand-up or scenario, I should say. And here, I guess Kron's not the best at best uh, example. Kron had great support at 21 to be watching. So the playoff 21 support played out really well. And it was a very significant bounce. It was a 5% bounce initially. And then we pulled back and it looks very similar to APHA. But the difference is when you see the strongest name like ACB on the five minute time frame, you get that bull entry in the first candlestick and there's no looking back. So at no point... On your entry here, are you at risk of a red trade? You are instantly significantly profitable. You can easily sit through consolidation and remain significantly profitable. And then you see continuation. So being able to hold and let the play, let the trade play out more patiently is a lot easier when you have that kind of profit cushion already at your on your side, as opposed to a name where you have to sit there and watch the consolidation head back towards your entry level. So I did exit APHA for some small profit in the morning. It was not the bounce I wanted. I wanted that V-shaped strong recovery. So because it wasn't the ideal setup of what I was looking for, I took that profit and moved on. IIPR ended up bouncing 4% very quickly. So I got my position at $67 and I am swinging IIPR, looking for the daily higher low to be set. And we will look at that in the USMJ video tomorrow. So for CGC, we do still have a tightening range where we have, you know, the pullback here. We never lost the uptrend of support. We've got just a tightening range to be watching from here. And we got that little bull break fake out with no follow through with spy weakness just starting on that bull break attempt day. And 42.91 was key support that we held. So this pattern is going to break within the next week or two. Let's see probably the next week, but doesn't have to. We could stay within it one more week. Watch for the volume spike. The volume spike is going to be associated with a break, and that's going to mean that we can believe the break and the direction 
that it occurs in because there's going to be follow through behind it. This is going to be very important for the entire MJ sector for the month of March with the direction that CGC is going to break this pattern. Bulls obviously want to see follow through from the strong close up near the high of the day. The hourly trend has not changed yet, but we got the higher low at 44.63 and we need the bull break of 45.50 and 45.57 to get this move underway. And then on the daily, we'll look for a lower high compared to 48.90 and a continued tightening range. Cron on the daily time frame, still holding on just fine overall. Held the daily higher low, 20.67 was the level. We bounced off of 21.09. Bulls are going to try and make their way back up to 24.37, but that's a long ways away. And this is the kind of scenario where we would look for a lower high to form on this bounce attempt. So I'm just looking at the different time frames here, but on the daily, we would look for a bounce and we still need 10% plus to even get up towards that resistance. So we would anticipate likely going to see a tightening range here into next week as well, just as far as the range of the last four days goes. Probably going to stay within that range, that four day range for at least a few more days. APHA, so the gap down for buying, and I chose APHA because the hourly RSI was so much more extended than other names. If you look at the RSI with extended hours on, at the low of the day today, we were down in the teens. We did get a little hourly higher low and higher high at the end of the day. So the hourly higher low is key on all names. 936 is support. And the next resistance for the bulls is going to be up at 10 psychological and 1012. And we're looking for this weekly range on APHA to continue to tighten. We're looking for the higher low compared to 808. As far as clarity goes, we know that any bounce attempt here is very likely to give us a lower high compared to 1068. And we're going to have to see a shift on the daily back to the bulls with a higher low and higher high in order to change this trend now that we did lose support on the daily time frame. So it's a little bit more tricky on APHA, a less clear setup, certainly more clear on Cron and CGC at this point. So we're going to look for APHA to follow along in the direction that those names break. AB, ACB kept its daily uptrend. Anything above 701 was a higher low. Gap down open for buying. We bounced off 733 and we saw a significant move up. Our higher low is established at 767 and the bulls have to break 788 to change this hourly trend and have us look to resume the daily uptrend overall. So a uh, winner in terms of buying the dip and the follow through that the bulls got. TLRY. So even for TLRY, the gap down open was for buying and the correlation to the rest of the sector was significant, in my opinion, to that. So it doesn't matter that you get the downgrade and you get the lowered price target, and that's overridden by the sector correlation. And we were extremely oversold when we opened this morning. That hourly RSI was down in the single digits, and we got significant bounce follow through. But on the daily, bears are going to be waiting here for the low $70 range for a bearish entry because anything under 83 is just a lower high 82 81 to be exact but anything under that level is just a lower high so we know it's extremely likely that tlry is going to set a lower high on this daily bounce attempt and in order to change the trend it's not going to happen anytime soon but we would have to bounce set the daily lower high set the higher low and then change the daily trend whereas the bears are going to be hoping for a bounce a lower high, and then a drop down to lower lows. And the direction that CGC breaks its tightening pattern is probably going to have a significant impact on which scenario of those two plays out for TLRY. Overall, SPY closed red today, but it closed near the high of the day. And we had the open, a dip down, didn't get much follow through for the bears, a lot of sideways trading, and then broke the high of the day, the second half of the day, and helped with the bulls maintaining their strength in the MJ sector into the end of the day. HEXO gap down for buying. Bulls are hoping the weekly higher low is being established off of this exponential support. And again, the daily time frame has a ways to go to change this trend. 738 is the first resistance, but I would say anything under 758 is just a lower high, keeping this little downtrend intact. So 758 is the most important resistance level. For everybody we want to see, have we changed the hourly trend? Some names have with the higher low and higher high. Some names have not. But everybody has a key hourly support that we need to be watching on Monday because if we lose that level, then we know the bulls don't have much strength for follow through. So 710 is the key support on Hexo and the bulls have to break 730 on Monday to confirm the hourly trend change. TRST, gap down, dip for buying. This level is a higher low at 1098. 
So not a clear little higher low and higher high like the other names, but we did take a little pause in there before continuation and closing at the high of the day. For TRST, anything under 1261 is just a lower high, so we're not going to change this daily trend anytime soon. We are going to look for daily lower highs to form on this bounce, which is why in the video yesterday I said, your game plan has two scenarios. You're locking in profit for a day trade, just looking for the hourly oversold bounce, or you're setting your stop loss at break even, and you're hoping this bounce get, gets followed through. But in order for this bounce to get enough follow through for you to have a big winner of a trade in that game plan, it's going to take days to play out, and we're going to have to set the lower high, higher, low, higher, high move. So it takes a lot more patience to try and hold through that trend change and shift on the daily as opposed to just locking in your quick gain against the trend for the hourly oversold bounce. OGI was one of the best bounces today, closing at the high of the day with a lot of strength. Hourly trend change, we had a higher low established at 850. We saw continuation at the end of the day for bull follow through. And on the daily time frame, it looks like our new higher low is set at 812, so a new important support level. And the bulls are going to try and make their way up to 950, still a ways to go. And if we cannot break that 950 level, we'll have a four-hour equilibrium to be watching. T-God, bulls buying the gap down open. There's a theme out there. Everybody's doing the same thing. So we are looking for a daily higher low to be established on T-God. Change of the hourly trend. Bulls want more follow through than this. We only broke it by a penny, but our hourly higher low is 412. We got the bull break of 426. And now the daily chart. Needs a little bit more follow through. Same thing. If we cannot break 462, we'll have a four hour equilibrium to be watching. So TGOD and OGI are similar in that regard. Daily higher lows established, but due to the size of the pullback, four hour equilibriums are a possibility. VFF, congrats to the bulls. Beautiful. That's a bull flag still. Not much of a flag pole, but pretty much the same consolidation that we just saw that led to an all time high. Volume spike. News came out that was very beneficial for the bulls. And we did end up breaking support first thing before the bulls bought the dip. And then it was just a V-shaped high volume recovery. We will need hourly consolidation, but we are in blue sky breakout mode. 1632 and 1650 are the next resistances. And our new daily higher low is very clearly established at 1384. So you can see the bounces and the bullish days that OGI and VFF had. Again, these are the stronger names that held for follow through on their strong bounces. And on the daily time frame, bulls didn't do a whole lot. Not really a lot of variance from the range of yesterday. But we got a, a low of the day, high of the day, higher low. So it's a tightening four hour equilibrium to be watching. And we're going to watch to see is this just a lower high compared to 84 cents? And if it is, it's going to tighten up into Monday. And we'll look for a break of this four hour equilibrium to dictate short term direction on N. If it breaks bullish, we zoom out to the daily and we know we're going to form a daily lower high on the bounce, very likely. And anything under, really anything under 116 would be the daily lower high. CXXI, bulls buying the dip in a big way, huge lower wick. So on the hourly time frame, we got a weak open and a flush. Not many names got that flush. Support is 161 and 151. Anything on the hourly under 186 is just a lower high. So we're not even close to changing the trend on the hourly time frame. And that flush was a bit of a setback. We have so many hourly trend changes out there on individual names, but not on CXXI. So the bulls have to follow through and break 173 on Monday to give us a clear new support level. But we actually did lose the daily uptrend at this point. That's a big bearish reversal candlestick on the weekly time frame and a volume climax. We have to be cautious here. We have to be cautious of a bounce for a lower high and then a drop to a lower low, which would indicate weekly consolidation to form a higher low is occurring. NRTH, lead bull, blue sky breakout. One of the stronger names out there. Big green day yesterday, followed through with more today and another strong close two days in a row and there's no resistance. So 160, 170 psychological levels, hourly higher low to keep the bulls in full control is 144. And that nice strong close for momentum to try and carry over into next week. So lots of similar setups out there due to the bounce correlation. Watch those hourly time frames. See if we keep the hourly higher lows on Monday. Bulls need to change their trend with the hourly higher high continuation, which only a few names have done at this point. The lead bulls are staying the strongest. And again, CGC 
tightening daily pattern breaking is going to give us a lot of clarity when we get the volume follow through associated with that break. So I hope you have a good Sunday. It's not Sunday, but I hope you have a good one anyway. It's Friday. Have a good Friday. We'll check back in tomorrow on the USMJ names. Throw down for the MST mods if you're in that group and benefit. Thanks again. Do good things. We'll see you tomorrow. So chapter six of the adventure, we had headed west. We hit Boulder and I was staying with that woman. Got the house sitting gig for a month. And I actually did trade a bit when I had that house sitting gig because I had stable internet and I had a routine and I could be more focused on it. So I was still trading penny stocks at that point. This was maybe five, six years ago. And I had a couple weeks until I started house sitting. So I explored Colorado. That's the kind of green you want to see. Tons of places to camp, tons of things to see. Utah and Colorado is a great chunk of land. And I haven't explored northern Utah. I wanted to. I had a road trip that was planned through northern Utah, through the northwest part of the country. I'm going to have to put that on my next to-do list later this summer. First, I'm going to be going back to Colorado in May, so I will bring my camera. All these pictures are with my phone, but I'll bring my camera, and I'm going to explore a bit more of Colorado and see some shows at the Red Rocks and have some fun, but that's for another time. So this time around, plenty of places to camp. My favorite part about Colorado is that there are rivers so many places coming off of mountains. And so that made two things very easy. Number one, getting the fresh water and uh, filtering it to drink. And then number two, being able to have things. You don't want to be, you know, have a cooler and have food that needs to be kept cool when you're road tripping across the country. It's just constantly needing ice and then those plastic bags. And it's just when you have ice cold water coming off the mountain, I would just pull over and fill up my cooler with cold water and then put stuff that needed refrigeration in it. And then, you know, 12 hours later, 20 hours later, I can just dump that water out and refill it with other cold water. So the water in, in Colorado is not for swimming. You can jump in and enjoy it for a brief amount of time, but it is very cold coming off of those mountains, especially in May and June. And I believe it was June now heading towards July. But tons of great places to camp and lots of solitude. My favorite part about getting to a place that was a couple miles into the trail and had a nice clearing like this where, you know, it's just a lake and, and the forest is knowing that at about 4 or 5 p.m., no new people are going to be getting up to that spot. And that's because you can't hike up there and have enough time to get back before it's getting dark. So there's this, this lull time before it gets dark where everybody is stops coming up. And so you have it to yourself during that dusk time when the sun's going down. This is the baby elk that I snuck up on. And again, it's just just being still and very slowly moving. It's just a game of, you know, watching animals and trying to get close to them. There were no mothers or fathers around, which was good. <laughs> So there's plenty of spots like this all over. And I can't stress enough how if you go to freecampingsites.net and you look at BLM land, and BLM land is the same as National Forest land to a certain degree. It's government owned. There's very little regulation on camping in terms of where you can camp. And it's just this big public lands that we have, you know, to take advantage of. This, I believe, is getting towards Rocky Mountain National Park, one of the spots near the entrance. These are marmots. So pretty much a giant squirrel, if I had to describe them, somewhat like a raccoon, but they would live under the rocks and you could tell what rocks they lived under because the rim around it was all bright green and lush and the grass, you know, immediately after the rocks was a little bit dry and arid. And that's because of their waste. They just pop out of their hole and they go to the bathroom and that, you know, fertilizes all the plants that are around their rock. So you can tell where they live and they were curious and friendly. If you pee on a rock, they really enjoy the salt and the water and they'll run and lick it up. And they, they, their lives, I mean, they just live in areas like this where they, that's all they know. That's their life. They sit on their rock and they overlook the expanse. There would be times where I would be alone in the spot and I would sit there and a marmot would jump up on his rock and he'd just be observing everything with me and just hanging out in the dusk. And they get curious if you don't move. So if I sat there for an hour, he might, you know, get used to my presence and come and check me out and see what's going on once he realizes that I'm not a threat. So that's the start of Colorado. We'll continue going westward over the Rocky Mountain National Park. 
Looking forward to going back there again in May and open to any suggestions of places. I'm probably going to hit up Telluride, Steamboat Springs, and Rocky Mountain National Park, Boulder. I'm going to see Papadocio in Red Rocks. I got a buddy in that band. And Random Rab and Polish Ambassador opening up. So that should be a fun show. That'll be in a few months, and I'll be sure to bring you all along. So have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you over the weekend.